In this video, we are going to discuss what a body butter is, what ingredients are found in body butters, how to make a very simple body butter, how to keep body butters from melting, how to make a body butter feel less greasy, and how to make a more advanced body butter. Body butters are moisturizers that contain some kind of butter or multiple butters in an oil or a combination of oils. They are thicker and heavier than lotions and are extra effective at treating dry skin and problem areas. They can be used all over the body or on specific problem areas like knees and elbows. Traditionally, body butters are anhydrous, which are the type of body butters we are discussing today. Also, I want to note that body butters, like the name suggests, are typically only used on the body. You can use them on the face, but most of us don't like heavy product on the face. If you do want to formulate a body butter for the face, I suggest using non-comedogenic ingredients so it's less likely to clog pores. Here's an example of a few different types of ingredients that can be used in body butters. Butters, oils, esters, silicones and silicone alternatives, texturizers, hardeners, waxes, and essential oils or fragrance oils. There are a lot of other ingredients that can be used in anhydrous body butters, but these are the ones that I can think of right now. Feel free to leave down in the comments other ingredients you like to use in body butters. A body butter recipe can be as simple as just a butter and an oil. If you are a beginner and don't have much money to blow on lots of ingredients, I recommend picking just one or two butters to start out with, maybe a handful of oils. You can't go wrong with the classic cocoa butter and shea butter. Personally, shea butter is my favorite, but there's no arguing that the most common butters we see are shea butter and cocoa butter. So I recommend starting out with those. Unless you wanna try a different butter, then go for it. The most common oils I see people using for DIYs seems to be good old olive oil and coconut oil. The reason I don't like working with coconut oil is because it's a solid in colder temperatures and liquid in hot temperatures. So it continuously changes its form depending on the temperature, which can make your end product unstable. I kind of suggest staying away from coconut oil for this reason. This is just me personally. If you love coconut oil, by all means, continue using it. I just don't like when my products change viscosity on me, and this is exactly what you'll experience when working with coconut oil. If you wanna make sure you're achieving a specific viscosity or hardness with your body butter, it's easier to stay away from coconut oil. If you aren't sure what oils to go out and purchase, I suggest doing some research on different oils. There's this great blog I'll link down in the description box. Just search for the oil you're interested in and you can read all about it. If I had to suggest five different oils for you to purchase, I recommend almond oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, rosehip seed oil, and jojoba oil. I also really like macadamia nut oil, meadow foam seed oil, and camellia seed oil, but you pick whatever interests you. So here's a formula for a simple body butter. I'm using 70% shea butter and 30% almond oil. All you need to do is weigh out the ingredients, put it in a water bath to melt everything down, place it in the refrigerator to let it harden, and then once it's hardened, mix with a hand mixer. And there you go, that's all you need to do to make a very simple body butter. The higher percentage of butter you use will cause your body butter to be harder. The lower the percentage, the softer it'll be. Every butter has a different hardness, shea butter being one of the softest butters, and cocoa butter being one of the hardest. So keep this in mind when choosing butters and the percentage you use them at. Have fun experimenting with different butters and their hardness by using them at different percentages. The easiest way and most common way to make a simple body butter less greasy is by adding in arrowroot powder, cornstarch, or tapioca powder. I've actually never tried this until now, so I wanna talk about my experience trying it. I don't have any tapioca starch, but I do have cornstarch and arrowroot powder. So we'll try both of those. I divided my simple body butter in three parts. One part is getting mixed with air root powder, one part gets cornstarch, and the other remains the same. This way I can compare all three. I definitely preferred the air root powder over the cornstarch. I can't say that I got rid of the greasy feeling though. It did minimize it a bit, but not enough to really make a difference. It did, on the other hand, make it feel more powdery and elegant. If you want to make a body butter, I highly recommend the addition of air root powder. It made the body butter feel more luxurious. As for the cornstarch, I can't say it made much of a difference. It may have reduced the greasiness a bit, but not enough to say it really works, especially since there are better ways to minimize the greasiness. Although, if you can't get your hands on air root powder, this is a good alternative. It didn't give that powdery, luxurious feel that the air root powder gave, though. 
When it comes to a simple body butter, the best way to keep it from melting is to lower the percentage of butter or oil and add in a little bit of wax instead. This way, if you forget your body butter in the car or your bathroom gets really hot, you don't have to worry about it melting. At least, not as much as it would without the wax. There is another way to keep body butters from melting, but we'll discuss that later in this post, in the advanced body butter section. I suggest using wax anywhere between 1-5% to in body butters. The more I formulate, the more I fall in love with emollient esters. Emollient esters are modified fatty substances that are often used as emollients and conditioning agents. An ester is formed when an organic acid combines with an alcohol. The great thing about emollient esters is, is that they don't feel as oily on the skin as other types of emollients and fatty ingredients. I'll put a link down in the description box so you guys can read more about esters. For example, the ester caprylic capric triglycerides are a specialized esterification of coconut oil using just the caprylic and capric fatty acids attached to a glycerin backbone. This makes the oil like ester non-greasy and lightweight as compared to a natural oil like coconut oil. I also love emollient esters because there is no surprise when formulating, and ester is always the same. The last batch will always be the same as your new batch, unlike natural oils. The batch of olive oil you buy today might be completely different than the one you buy a year from now, because it is from a different crop. It is harder to find consistency in natural oils, which is a huge reason commercial brands don't typically use them. They want their last batch of face moisturizer to be the same as their new batch, which is why they choose emollient esters over natural oils. Of course, with the growing popularity of natural ingredients, a lot of commercial brands have been introducing these natural oils. They still include those emollient esters, but don't advertise them like they do the natural oils. Most of the time, the commercial products only include a small amount of that natural oil, even though they are advertising the oil on the cover of their shampoo bottle. But let's not get too off track here. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I love emollient esters. They are consistent, lightweight, non-greasy, and very moisturizing which makes them a great replacement for natural oils, especially in body butter, since they contain a very high percentage of oil and butter, which are very greasy. The most popular ester used in body butters to help reduce greasiness is IPM. This is an ester of isopropyl alcohol and muristic acid. It is suggested to be used at 2-5% in lotions and creams, so we'll be using it at 5% in our body butter today. Now that you understand what an emollient ester is and why you would use one in a body butter in place of natural oils, Let's take a look at a simple recipe for a body butter using IPM. This will create a much less greasy, oily, and heavy body butter compared to the one before. Here's the formula I'll be using. You just want to weigh out all the ingredients, melt them down, let it sit in the fridge to reharden, and then mix with the hand mixer. I actually just added in 5% IPM into the one I already had prior. That way we're not wasting as much product. With the addition of IPM at only 5%, I did notice it made the body butter feel a little less greasy just a little bit. The big difference I think it made is it made the body butter absorb quicker. I don't feel like it was left sitting on my skin as long as the body butter without IPM. It did give the body butter more of a dry, greasy feeling and made the body butter feel less slippery. I think if you added an air root powder, it will really take a basic body butter to the next level with only minimal ingredients. So now we're going to replace all the plant oils with esters. We're going to be using 70% shea butter, 5% IPM, and 25% C12-15 alkali benzoate. Weigh out all the ingredients, heat it up using a water bath to melt everything, let it sit in the fridge to reharden, and then mix with a hand mixer. This one felt far less greasy than the prior body butter. It was still pretty greasy compared to a lotion, but it had more of a dry, oily feel. Then when I added in the air root powder, what a difference. I really, really liked this one. Earlier in this post, I mentioned that there is a way to harden body butters, and that is by adding in hardeners like fatty acids and fatty alcohols. This includes cetyl alcohol, stearic acid, behanol alcohol, sorry if I didn't pronounce that right, and satyryl alcohol. Let me know if there's any other ones that you'd like to use down in the description box. These are great additions because you can lower the percentage of butter, which is one of the huge cause for oiliness and greasiness and instead use one of these hardeners in place of the butter. These hardeners have a much higher melting point compared to butters and are moisturizing without being greasy. Combining these hardeners with emollient esters will create a much less greasy body butter compared to the ones made without these additions. Here's a formula for an advanced body butter with emollient esters and hardeners. I'm going to be using 50% shea butter, 10% cetyl alcohol, 5% IPM, 
25% C12-15 alkali benzoate and 10% cocoa caprolate. Just weigh all the ingredients out, melt them down, place it in the fridge to harden, and then mix with a hand mixer. So this one came out much softer than the prior one. It melts upon contact of skin much easier. I was actually pretty surprised by this. So if you want it to be harder, definitely increase the percentage of cetyl alcohol or use a different hardener like stearic acid. Stearic acid can actually create a thicker and harder product compared to cetyl alcohol. I definitely preferred this one over the prior as it was less greasy. I do think I would have preferred it to be a bit thicker though. So next time I would try using stearic acid or increase the percentage of cetyl alcohol. I could even try adding a wax to it too to increase the hardness. Of course, when I added in some arrowroot powder, it really made the body butter much more pleasant to use. So I've actually never been the biggest fan of body butters and this is really the most I've ever really worked with them. I have tried some really lovely body butters from one of you guys. I'll link her shop down in the description box if you guys want to go check her out. I think I did a review over her products, so I'll link that down below too. But other than that, I've never really used body butters too much and never really worked with them too much. So if you have any tips that you would like to share, add them down in the description box. It'll help me out, it'll help my viewers out. And feel free to comment anything else you guys would like about body butters. Have any questions, put them down below. And with all that said, let's move on to the Patreon shoutouts. At Stardust Bath & Body, Nature's Farm Girl, Kennedy's Essentials, Let's Blend, Creative with Love, Wallflower Wildflower, Heartfelt Beauty, At Sugared underscore Pineapple, KAJ Bath & Body, Blue Mint Soaps, Say Tara, At Salt Air Label, Lenise Beauty, Arger Naturals, Shark City Naturals, Ohana Lay, At Danny Botanicals, Eclectic Beauty Cosmetics, EC Naturals, At Nino55, Ruhi Test Skincare, Be Marie Skin, K Spa Soap over on Etsy, KandCool.com, Hempy Girl Organics, and BrieMakiage.com. I also sell skincare products myself over on Etsy. I'll have a link down below in the description box along with all my lovely patrons. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this video over body butters. This is a part of my Formulating for Beginners series. I'll link to the playlist down in the description box so you guys can watch all the videos in this series in case you've missed any. And I'll do my best to keep continuing this series because I know I've seriously been slacking on it. So thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you guys next time. Later. I'm stuck in the motions I've been consumed by the wrath of time Like I'm pro, I'm shattered in this life It's still the path that I've chosen Because I've had a vision Now I'm on a mission to find myself with you